So uh, if you'd just like to introduce yourself and just tell us a little bit about how you got into the whole scene of fly fishing, fly tying, and that sort of thing. Sure. Uh, my name is Linda Hotchkiss. I'm from the United States, New York specifically. Uh, I've been fly fishing for probably a little over 10 years or so and tying regularly for about five years. Um, fish primarily in the Northeast United States, so of course we have the Great Rivers, the Beaver, the Beaver Kill and uh, the Catskill Rivers, Willowimock. Uh, I also live near the ocean, so we go out and do saltwater fishing quite a bit. Uh, got into tying, it was just an interesting area of fly fishing to sort of continue to learn and uh, I had a number of friends who tied and who would give me lessons and then we had an opportunity to uh, start tying at shows and actually I've uh, been specializing in woven flies, woven body flies. It was something not a lot of people were doing so I took some time and I learned it and it's great because it gets to be a little bit creative. Uh, but also create really great patterns that catch trout and work well on the stream. So um, what was the thing that sort of got you hooked into fly fishing? So what keeps you keeps staying with the fly fishing? Well, I like it because I have to think about it a lot. You know, it's not, I, I find it very relaxing, but at the same time I have to be thinking because I have to think about what fly I want to use and where the presentation is going to be. Um, I had fished a lot as a kid, uh, mostly spin casting, um, and there one of my greatest thrills was how far could I cast that thing out. And I was sort of watching something on fly fishing and I sort of noticed that it was all casting and it was all trying to get it out there. So I said, all right, I want to learn that someday. Uh, and someday came at some point where I said, okay, we're doing this. Um, friends say I watched a river run through it too many times. But, uh, you know, so I got into it and I met some great friends and uh, I belonged to a group of people in New York called the Juliana's Anglers. It's a women's fly fishing group and about 40 or 50 members in New York. And they organized some great trips to really notable rivers uh, like in the Catholic. And I've also been able to take advantage of fly fishing and fly tying now uh, to travel internationally to shows like the BFFI. Uh, I've also done the Dutch show. I've done uh, the Irish shows. And I've also been able to go fishing in Europe a lot, in Iceland and Norway and Scotland, and met great people who help us get on streams and help us, uh, once we got turned on to salmon, it became a whole new game. <laughs> so now we're always seeking out salmon fishing wherever we go, and trout fishing. So um, what's your, your, what's your um, first memory from fly fishing so that really stuck with you? Um, I think, you know, my first, I, I took lessons and then I went on a trip with uh, this club, the Julia and us anglers, and I picked that particular trip because we were going to a river called the Farmington, which is located in Connecticut. Um, and that river, um, my family, my father's family, had always lived on that river and lived in that area. They were from that town. He was from that town. And I don't know for sure, but I like to think that my grandfather, and maybe his grandfather, also fly fished in that area. So I would go up there and I would see the river and I'd sort of say, you know, when I, I got to go learn that. I got to go learn to do that. So my first trip was there and my first fish on the fly was caught up there. So that was very exciting for me and really a family memory for me. So, um, what's your, the biggest fish that you caught on a fly? <laughs> Everyone wants to know. <laughs> I, you know, I, 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 beyond the first fish, I don't count them so much. Uh, I did catch, I think it was a 36 centimeter brown trout when I was in Iceland, and I had several Atlantic salmon bigger than that. Uh, we've also kept, caught striped bass bigger than that, but for me, it, it's not so much how many fish I've caught or, or how big they are. I certainly like to remember how big they are. But just being outside, being in nature, usually it's very quiet and it's very relaxing and it's just kind of just a, a, an exercise just in being outside and just having fun more than just how many fish I caught or how big they were at any time. So just going on, on to fly tying. Yeah. Um, so you said about your, your, your woven flies. Yeah. Is that sort of the, 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 your favorite style of... Um, I tie everything, and I, I actually have been experimenting more with streamers. Uh, in the United States, when you go to a fair, there are a lot of people tying streamers, or a lot of people trying salmon. So really, I wanted to do something that was a little bit unique, 
that maybe people didn't see all the time. And I'd always been sort of interested in the woven flies every time I saw them because they're usually quite beautiful. Uh, so it was kind of a great idea to be able to learn them. And I'm expanding on what I learned creatively with colors and styles. Uh, there are also some techniques that I'm learning, uh, some Japanese techniques that I'm going to be learning that would be something you hasn't been seen over here. Mm -hmm. So it'll be really kind of cool to bring that over. Um, is there any particular sort of brands of hooks or types of hooks that you like using? Uh, I'm on the Daiichi Pro team, so I do use Daiichi hooks. Um, also used a lot of partridge hooks um, and uh, Graham Maisley's hooks. Uh, I can't even pronounce the name of his company. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it depends what kind of fly I'm tying. Yeah. You know, if I'm trying to tie a classic streamer, I'm going to look for something in that particular style. Uh, but with trout hooks, it's Daiichi, and what I tie when for, for fairs is Daiichi. Mm -hmm. Uh, is there any um, sort of favorite materials that you like working with? Well, certainly the bodies for the woven flies are an embroidery floss, so it's a very inexpensive material. Um, but, you know, I, I seem to have a lot of materials and I have to get more, use more of them <laughs> than I currently do. So certainly, you know, every kind of material has different, uh, when you see it, you, you like looking at it and saying, I can do something with it. I was just looking at hackles today that I'm going to pick up for streamer flies. So, Everything you can find can be used, and I think fly tires are always looking at anything, anything you would normally throw out and say, can I use that for something? Would that make something? So we're pretty resourceful most of the time. Um, so, you know, obviously I had the chance to travel around to mm -hmm. different fairs and everything. What, is there anything that makes the British one? unique or special? Um, it's actually it's a lot of fun. It's a lot of tires from around both Britain and the world come to it. So we have a lot of friends that we get to see year after year. Um, certainly uh, moving into to February made it a little harder for us to fish when we come over, but we did enjoy it. Um, and definitely, you know, traveling to Britain uh, and Great Britain is, is, is wonderful for us. This is, I think, my fourth trip this year between uh, different countries in, in, in the United Kingdom. So uh, we do really like it, and it's an enjoyable fair. And get a great crowd. Get a lot of people coming through who really know what they're looking, you know, really interesting to speak with. Um, are there any particular fly tires that have uh, inspired you or really sort of got the ideas going? Um, I get a little bit of something from everyone. I tie a close friend of mine is Cat Rollin, who's tying it there also. Uh, but I've taken lessons with Paul Little. I take any opportunity to sort of... It, it's hard when you're tying at the fair yourself to get a chance to sit and watch someone tie. But, you know, as much as you can, you try to get over to somebody else and just pick up one or two tidbits that you can say, oh, you do that or you use that material or that looks great and kind of file that away for next time. Mm. So, uh, just a final question then, so what would you say to people that are sort of a little bit curious about fly fishing but they might not really know how to start or what to do or, you know, what, have you got any advice for them? Um, I would say just do it. I mean, there are a lot of programs, especially in the States, <laughs> where for a little bit of money you can get some instruction. And really from there, you know, find a friend and get out and fish. I mean, I think that's anybody I've seen who's really continued in the sports because they had somebody else who was willing to take them out. And as I found out with my club, we had a lot of people who were willing to, to take you out and get you started. And, you know, we, we joke around about the amount of money we spend, but certainly you want to share that with somebody else so you can bring them in. And I have brought my sister into the sport because I knew she would love it too. And uh, so that's been kind of neat, you know, to have her around on trips and be able to go fishing with her, spend more time together. Good. Hey, thank you very much. You're welcome.